In this video, we'll take a look at how we can use Order API to list down all of the orders from your store, and then we'll create a very simple invoice app that allows you to print the order invoice. Stay tuned for that. Before we start this lesson, this video is sponsored by Hostinger. Hostinger is one of the best and cheapest hosting provider that you can use for any of your Shopify app development. We use Hostinger for most of our Shopify app development projects, and so far, we haven't experienced any issues at all. It is very fast, fully secure, and have a very easy-to-navigate control panel. Check the link in the description below to learn more and get up to 90% discount and a free SSL certificate on your purchase. Alright, so for this video, we're just gonna make it super simple and easy. So, if we take a look at here in our orders page, we only have... Uh, one order and that's the order that I made a couple minutes ago and what we're going to do is to do the same table maybe list down all the orders and then if we click the order number it will make it will display a model and display the details about the orders or maybe we can just uh, add a button that says print and then it will print out the invoice doc as a document so maybe we can do something like that but not too complicated so let's open our index.php first and actually let's also open install.php and make sure that you have read orders and write orders um enabled in this in the scopes variable otherwise you won't be able to access your orders through api so yeah, since we already have it, we're just going to leave it as is. Actually, we can just close that. And all right, so we're here in index.php. The first thing we need to do is to actually just get rid of or just comment this out because we don't want to display the product PHP here in this video. So what we can do is to just create another include once and we're just going to call this orders.php. Make sure you end it with semicolon. Then let's save that and let's open our file Zilla. Make sure you save that. And after that save, we can just create a new file and we'll call this, of course, orders.php. Once the file is created, let's edit that. So we're here in orders.php. The first thing we need to do is, of course, create the table with table class and table border. Since we're using Bootstrap, we can just use the following class to create a simple table. And then next, of course, we don't forget the tbody tag to create the table. And inside of the tbody tag, what we can do is to create a PHP tag with the following variables. So we have orders variable and we have used Shopify call function and used the following API endpoint, which is the orders API. And to for it to work, we need to also apply the following field, which is status. And we give it the value of any so you can also apply a value of open you can type closed you can type canceled those are just the status of orders so if you want to filter out the status or the orders you can just replace any with open close and canceled all right so after that we can just use of course for each loop and type in orders and instead of key value we'll just you use order and then inside of this we can create another for each and use order and then as key to value but actually since we're using table we need to close this first and then open it again same here actually at the end and then before the second loop we need to create the row for the table so we can just put it there like so. And inside of the second for each, we can just apply the following code. So we have that th tag or the table header tag. And inside of that, we are using anchor tag to, you know, to open the model. So we have data toggle model. It will open the model and then the targeted model, which is the model with an ID of print order. And we have incremented or no, um, concatenated the order number of the current order so that's what we're going to do and for the next table data just contact email and then you know the basic details of, about the order so actually regarding this one instead of concatenating first name and then last name what you can do is just 
delete that and replace first name with just name and it will output first name and then last name all together and yeah next one is total price and then the currency so basic information about the orders that's it next one is of course we need to create the model but the problem is we're inside the table so is it really okay to do it inside of the table create another div a model actually eh, whenever you create another a different tag which is not compatible with the table um, for some reason html just pushed that out outside of the table so for example if, if we create div here and then if we refresh our app this div will be placed somewhere around here or above the table so that's that's what happens if you create a different tag inside of the table. So I guess that's fine because what we really need here is the order number. And the prob uh, what I recommend actually is to instead, like, like what we did in the previous video, like in the pr uh, product API video, what we can do is create a modal outside of the table and then just use Ajax. So whenever we click this anchor tag, it will trigger a function like an Ajax and then it will gather the information about the current order with the order number and yeah, it will just fill the, the model. So you can do something like that, but it will just take a lot of time again. And so I don't want to create another set of videos about the same topic. I guess we can just do it like this. So I'm just going to create a div over here and then close that and then next one is of course the modal dialog like so and then close that and then inside of the dialog of course we need to create the content like that and close it again you can pause this video and then just copy the script also we have the header so over here you can just print order number and just echo out the same order number like that and then that's it next one is the modal body so we can just type here div modal body like that and inside of the modal body what we can do is to create a card so div card and then make sure it doesn't have any border and then also we need to give this an id of print this invoice because once we click the button print, actually speaking of the button, we need to apply the button at the bottom of the model. So we have the header, we have the body, and over here we should have the footer. As you can see, we have the ID of print button. So we need to create a JavaScript function for that. So if we click the print button button, it should run a function that prints what's inside of our print this invoice and yeah let's work on that and so inside of this div what we can do is to create of course the card body with no padding so make sure you add no padding it's just for styling so whatever and then next one is we need to create a row with a padding of two and right here is just example logo so if you want to apply your logo here you can do that and here as well, we have the invoice number. You can also just replace this with something like order number or order ID, something like that. I'm not really going to uh, change it at all because this is just an example invoice. You can customize this to whatever you want. All right, next is, of course, we're just going to make a line here. It doesn't really matter. And next is another row for a set of um data about the order so we have the client information so we have the name like above like over here same same format same value and we have the address from the customer and the country where is the customer uh purchased the item and or where's the customers coming from and next is the payment details which is we're using payment gateway names and we're using the default or the number, the first gateway that has been used. So by default, it should be always zero. And it should always, since, I, since I'm since i just testing out, it should display bogus, you know, the test payment uh, gateway. And next, of course, my name, same again here, just the same. 
All right, so now that we have the header for our invoice, you know, the template, the logo, the invoice number, we also have the collect information and so on. And of course, we don't want to leave it without the items that the customer have ordered. So what we can do is to apply the following code. So as you can see, we have we have created another row. So that is the start and this is the end, okay? So you can just post the video and copy that line. So we have created a set of rows and it have the have following column with a header item, description, quantity, cost, and then the total of the item or the, the purchase item. And here, the second below the column, below this row, we have created a for each, which will loop through everything inside the line items. So Line items is another array inside of orders and it will list everything that the customer have purchased. So it needs to be instead for each. So you need to loop through everything again. So yeah, this is just a lot of loop uh, for each. So ba uh, the base for each, the second for each, for each order, and then order again i mean line items to list down uh for our model so yeah that should actually work now and if you want to copy this i'm just gonna um uh, pause it right over here and uh, you can start pausing the video and copy the code and just gonna scroll down and you can copy the code feel free to do that all right, so once you're done, I'm just going to save this and make sure that I have uploaded that to my host. And there you go. Let's open our app and test if it does actually work. So I just open my app over here. All right, so it does actually work. So we have the order number, which is also clickable. We have my email address to contact the customer. And we have my name who purchased the item and the total price for the purchase or our sale so yeah if we click the order number it should display a model so if we do that as you can see it may it, it display the model and it print it display the print order number 1001 so it's actually working so yeah it does look pretty nice i guess no it doesn't look pretty nice but yeah, you can customize it. Feel free to do that. If you're if you're working on an invoice app, yeah, feel free to customize it. So the next thing we need to do is to actually give this button a function. So if we click print button, as you can see, it not it's not doing anything. So we need to give this some functionality. So if we take a look at actually at there's actually a plugin for that. So it's called print this. So if we search print this CDN. We should then be able to just copy the CDN. So I'm just going to copy the script tag and open our script once again. And here in index.php, right, right below the bootstrap JavaScript, I'm just going to paste it right over here. And there you go. And let's open again orders.php. So we need to give the button, the print button, a function. So I guess what we can do is I'm just not going to mess with the script, the previous script. So I'm just going to create my own script tag here and I'll make a function that says actually not the function. I'm just going to type in print this and then actually no. What's the function? Print no ID, print ID. Then I'm just going to paste right over here and on. Yes, that's right. Sorry, I forget how to do jQuery. And next is function. And then I'm just going to open that and close curly braces. Don't forget the semicolon. And inside of the function, on click event, we're just going to give the uh, the class or the ID. I think it's print this invoice. Yeah, I'm just going to copy that. And here, ID print this invoice, I'll use print this function. And that's actually, that should work. So if we save this and upload the file to FileZilla and open our app, 
we should then be able to print this invoice. So if we click this order number and if we select print, there you go. It's now it's working. As you can see, yeah, it's pretty it's all right. You can just customize this, like I said. I guess the point of this video, of this tutorial, is to give you an idea how how to use um, order API to get all of this uh, data. All right, so enough of that. The next thing we need to do is, of course, to ask Shopify to allow us to get orders uh, that are older than 60 days or, yeah, 60 days. So what we can do is I'm just going to log into my developer's account and I'll see you there. All right, so we're here in my app. And the first thing we need to do, of course, we need to click the app setup. We need to visit that page. And if we scroll down, we should have this order section. We have read all orders. So we can request access by clicking this button. So if you click that, that should display a modal. And Shopify want, will, will ask us to answer the following uh, form or question. So we need to describe uh, how this app, how our app will help the merchants. And the next one is why our app needs access to orders that are older than 60 days so over here we could just ask we could just say this app will help merchants to easily send out invoices to customers that are asking for invoices and then over here, why does your app need access to orders that are older than 60 days? This you can just say this app needs a needs an access to orders, needs access to orders that are older than 60 days. You see, Grammarly is really great when it comes to grammar. This app needs access to orders that are older than 60 days to allow to send out invoices to customers that are still asking for invoices regardless of the date of purchase. So that should be enough actually but it should you can give as much information as possible the more information you give the better so i'm just gonna say that this is just for tutorial purposes to let them know yeah it, it would make sense because we have weekly health tutorial app that should make sense all right so if i send a request that should actually yeah that should work but we have to wait for a couple of days yeah, so request has been submitted. Um, it may take up to seven days. So yeah, you just need to wait. And once your request is approved, you should then be able to access orders that are older than 60 days. But don't forget to use the access scope, read all orders uh, in your install.php file. So you need to change that as well. And then you need to uninstall your app and then reinstall it so you can use it um, through API. But anyway, that's it for now for this video. I hope this video helped you understand how it's like to work with order API or REST API. Like I said, if you if you start understanding how to use REST API using PHP, you should start getting how to use other, other parts of Shopify REST API like orders, API, collection, products, um, variants. You can do it. It's just really, really simple. The process is just the same. The difference is how how you're going to use the API, uh, where you're going to apply it. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.